Hi, welcome to City Vision University's uh, course designer training. This first lecture is going to be talking about how City Vision's mission, values, and students inform our approach to course design. Um, I'm Andrew Sears, um, and let me just uh, give you an overview of the course outcomes for this course. So after completing this course, you should be able to, and, and this really is going to follow the template that you're using. This course itself is following constructionist philosophy, and I'll explain that a little bit more. Um, but you, you're going to go through phase one, and there you're going to complete a course analysis document combining the internal and external stakeholder needs um, with learning from the field. And that's going to be phase one. And then in phase two, you're going to focus on creating a draft course outcomes and outline. And we just have you do a draft because, um, you know, like many of you have been taught in writing major papers, the last thing you write is your summary because you don't have a very clear summary till the end. And it's kind of the same thing with, with outcomes and um, in a course is often you have to iterate. Um, so you, you start with some outcomes, but then you, you're going to revise them. Then you're going to go through, and most of the work is going to be going into designing complete detailed weekly lessons. And um, you're, you're looking to actually design exactly what's going to go into our learning management system. And you're going to use a course blueprint. That's phase three. Then you're going to create a course presentation. You're going to finalize your course outcomes in phase four. And then in phase five, you're going to finalize the course description and then you're gonna record your course lectures. So let me jump into this um, lecture. And, and also let me just say, this lecture is extremely dense. For, for a lot of you, you might wanna watch this a couple times or pause it and replay. Um, I apologize, but I, I just need to cover this, this material. Um, so you know, one of the big pictures is just understanding how institutional mission and values drive program and course design. So you have the mission, then you have the institutional outcome and values. And then you have a program learning outcome. So you might have the addiction counseling um, outcomes or an MBA program outcomes. Um, and then under that, your course learning outcomes are going to fit under that. But the, the point of this is everything's driven by the mission and the values. Um, so City Vision's mission is to use online education to transform lives through Jesus, justice, and technology. Now, that's a very concise statement. So to really understand how this um, plays out, you have to unpack that Jesus justice technology. Um, our, our vision is to transform lives by providing radically affordable online education to those serving the poor and the addicted. Um, now, the Jesus part, we're doing online Christian education. Um, and, uh, you know, w some of these bolded words are the ones that we'll fo focus on, but, but I'll unpack this in a lot more detail throughout this lecture and throughout the rest of this course. Um, you know, we're also focused on providing the justice is radically affordable and practical education, um, focused on the needs of the poor and the addicted and the underserved. And then the technology really is um, reflecting, you know, we're trying to be very cost effective. We use a methodology that's called lean startup. We're very entrepreneurial and that's gonna be reflected in our design. So what's the big picture of uh, City Vision University? So um, many of you know, I did my doctoral dissertation on disruptive innovation in Christian higher education of the poor. And this is kind of a summary of what I learned through that process. I published it about uh, 10 years ago. Um, but basically you can look at higher education um, in a two by two matrix of you have secular and you have Christian higher education, and then you have majority culture um, which is largely, you know, white, middle or upper middle class and then non-majority culture. So, um, and there you have traditional government run institutions, you have private schools, you know, like Harvard, this would be your state schools and the size represents the total number of students you might have. Then you have traditional Christian colleges. And then in the non-majority culture, you have historically black uh, colleges and universities, Hispanic serving universities, minority serving universities, but, and those are race focused and people are, are you know, recognize those are non-majority culture, but also you have the, those that are, I would say more class focused. So community colleges, trade and vocational schools. Um, and then you have, uh, and, and one of the most significant things to recognize and in my doctoral dissertation, there's many things that's driving this disruption. Um, but the biggest thing is what this phenomenon called mega universities. Um, so these are universities that have more than 100,000 students. 
And really what's driving that is online education is driven by what's called economies of scale, where it actually costs a lot less per student as you, you grow. And that's really what, what's driving this growth. So um, the whole sector is being transformed by these, these mega universities. Um, and then in this sector over here, you have what I call non-majority culture Christian higher education. I'm, I'm focused in the U.S. context. So now this is a tiny dot. There are so few institutions and most of these institutions have been very small because you're micro-targeting. So if you're going to say, okay, we're going to be a black Christian university in Kansas City, um, you, you've micro-targeted yourself so much that you're, you're not going to have a very large audience. Now online allows you to scale more and city vision university and others are trying to do two things we're trying to, to apply the principles of disruptive innovation and cultural innovation now one of the things i looked at in my doctoral dissertation was the rising cost of attending college and, and many of you are familiar with this so it's been growing at 2.5 times the the cost of inflation there's a lot of drivers for that it's not an there's not an easy solution for this it's not like you know all the administrations getting rich. It, there's there's a lot more fundamentals to the economics, um, but what what's happened is you have this out of control tuition, and that has created problems. You know, all these organizations are saying, "Hey, we're going to be you know diverse," but really, what's happened? Um, you know, my uh, kids and I like to watch The Simpsons, and a, a couple months ago, I watched an episode where the the Simpson family goes to the rich people mall, and I. Uh, like the tagline that they had um, there, it says, our prices discriminate because we can't. And um, ultimately, that's what's happened really in the U.S. for the past 50 years, where, you know, we, we can no longer do racial discrimination, um, but we can make things cost insanely high, like, you know, property values in certain neighborhoods or um, attending college that creates a different form of, of discrimination. And ultimately, that's a big part of what we're trying to address with City Vision College. Now, for these non-majority culture um, institutions, so you have some that are going to be race-focused, some that are global-focused. So I got my doctorate at Baki University. 70% of their students are outside the U.S., and then some are class-focused. So we're more class-focused. Um, so what that means, if you look at you know what we're trying to do, so we have this cultural target. We're, we're building a school for Christians that are serving the poor and the addicted. So if you look at this kind of race and class grid, um, you have upper middle class here and lower and working class here. The gray is basically where we have students and we're trying to you know, cover all these groups. Now, traditional Christian colleges um, that are part of what's called the uh, CCCU, um, they're largely serving upper middle class. Um, and then community colleges often are serving lower middle and working class. Now we're spanning um, you know, a, a pretty wide group. But the reality is, is we're not competing with CCCU schools um, hardly at all because we just have a different clientele. But the point is that whenever we design our courses, this is our target. So that's going to change how we do our design um, very significantly. Another way of showing this is in our cross-cultural courses, um, we, we encourage our students to look at, okay, what are the tiers and how well are you serving them? So our bullseye is Bible-centered Christians serving the poor and the addicted now currently that's largely adult white and black working class but um you know some you know middle class a few upper middle class um and then our tier two is christians and nonprofit um professions so they may not be uh, you know serving the poor and the addicted and other you know nonprofits. and then you know 80 percent of our students kind of fall uh in, in in these categories but we also have a good number of participants from Bible-centered programs serving the poor. So that would be like a rescue mission graduate um, or uh, things along those lines. So about 21% of our students have uh, recently been homeless um, in a residential recovery program, addiction recovery program, or recently um, incarcerated. Um, and then our tier three are just, you know, there's some people who aren't Christian. They just like us because we're cheap. Um, and then there's others that are just Christian and they like us because they're cheap. And then, you know, we're trying to serve international students better. Um, and the reality is 60% of our, our, our focus has been on tier one. This is where our students are. 30% is focused on tier two and 10% on tier three. And part of the idea is we, we, uh, you know, typically serve, you know, the closer you are to the bullseye, the better we're, we're serving that. So, um, 
This is a little more detailed in terms of who we serve. We're primarily serving uh, Bible-believing Christians, serving the poor and the addicted, um, growing at about 20% a year. We had 269 students, primarily the bottom half socioeconomically. Of those who applied for aid, 74% received Pell. That's an indication of being low income. Average age, 40 73% working adults, 92% in the U.S., 71% transfer in with credits, um, about two-thirds white, and the largest group after that is black and then and Hispanic. About 60% are in lower to middle management, 20% are in executive leadership, 20% are graduates of uh, Christian recovery or prison reentry programs, um, and you can kind of see the, the degrees that we cover. 75% of our students come from partners in ministries, but only 4% of those come from church partners. Um, so that, that's important just to understand. Whenever you're designing, like if you're writing a book or you're, you're giving a talk, you want to know who your audience is. So this is, this is our, our audience. So how do our values inform our pedagogy and andragogy? Um, so one, probably the biggest, is academic theory versus practical application. So we're preparing students as practitioners rather than, um, you know, I would say 90% of our students were preparing for practitioners rather than, or maybe 95% rather than um, academic careers. Now, most uh, Christian higher education is really a caste system, and the whole purpose of every level is to prepare people to be doctorates. And that's not what we're trying to do now. If people want to go on for doctorates, we don't want to, you know, leave them hanging. But at the same time, that's not our focus. Prioritizing effective growth and skills learning over, you know, there's there's three domains. There's effective uh, cognitive uh, learning and then, um, you know, the psychomotor, but often that's skills related. And then practical formatting of papers. So, you know, we want to, to prepare them to write papers for their job. Um, you know, APA is important, especially if you're in counseling, um, but in nonprofit courses, it's not as important. Um, different assumptions. Uh, you know, I look at a lot of Christian, uh, you know, colleges and universities, and I look at a lot of their courses that are focused on, you know, training people to serve the, the, um, poor. And they assume that everyone's coming from an upper middle class, not everyone, but a large majority of their students are coming from an upper middle class white student as, as audience. Um, you know, other things, if you work in secular context, they as assume an objectivist framework. Um, and often, you know, you can be a Christian and if you've taught in secular schools, um, that doesn't mean that you know how to do Christian integration. Christian integration is a science and, and an art, um, and it requires, um, a lifetime of learning to, to be honest. So, um, and the other, uh, factor is just different definitions of quality and quality versus value. Um, so standardization and low error rate is really where a lot of the instructional design field is focused on. For us, we're focused more on adaptability, relevance, and innovation, business definitions of quality versus relational and cultural definitions. Um, another example would be, you know, are you a full service restaurant? So are you a high quality first full service restaurant? Are you going to be fast casual? That's more of where we are. So that's like, you know, you have good food, but you have to go up front to order yourself. Um, and then you have fast food. Um, and you're going to have, you know, different definitions of, of quality. So how does that translate? L let me just use an example and how that, that translated in our approach to our ministry program design. So Tim Keller provided a framework and he said, you know, you, you really have three things. You have what to believe, um, and that is the doctrinal foundation. You have theological vision. That's uh, really how do you restate the gospel in a particular culture in a moment of history, and you're going to have different emphases. Um, and then you have what to do, ministry expression, and that's nonprofit courses. Now, the traditional Christian university, if they have a ministry program, they're going to be 90% over here. You know, they're going to teach you Hebrew, Greek, all these other things, theology and Bible courses, 10% of maybe of applied theology. Um, but, you know, I, I talk to pastors all the time or parachurch leaders, and they said, no one ever taught me how to do a budget. No one ever taught me how to manage people. Um, so City Vision you know, for our master's in ministry and, and our bachelor's is, is more focused on the doctrinal foundation, but the master's assumes that, that people are coming in and they have more of that. So, you know, we're focusing much more on the applied and on, on the actual practical of how do you run your nonprofit. 
um, is, is an example. So if you look at our program design, um, you know, we, for our master's program that, that we're um, uh, developing, going to be launching later this year, um, you know, a lot of our program outcomes for that are focused on, on this middle area and organizational skills. But if you actually look at the courses, about half the courses are, are going to be over here. Um, so one other way of looking at this is, so we have our three values and most of our faculty come in with two of city visions, three values. So you got Jesus, justice, and technology. Um, and it's fine because very few people are going to have all three coming in. So some are nonprofit staff and they need, uh, city visions, technical competency. Um, so we've invested a lot of, of effort in training faculty, um, both in, in teaching our courses and in designing courses. So very few schools that are small as us are going to have such extensive training resources. And the reason for that is often this is our best source of, of faculty. Um, and they have uh, Jesus and justice, but they need to learn online education. Like it's a science um, and, and an art and people spend, you know, decades learning this. So there, there's, a, there's a big learning curve, but you need to learn the technical competency for online education. Then we get people who come, they've done practical, affordable online education. So we've had people from, uh, you know, schools that are highly affordable online education, but they've never taught in a Christian context. So they need to learn the theory and practice of Christian education. Um, and then you have people from Christian higher education, and then you need uh, cultural competency. You need to understand City Vision's students. So even if you've been at a Christian institution and they, they do cross-cultural stuff, um, there's almost no Christian institution that teaches uh, the types of students that, that we teach um, or, you know, as their major audience. So, um, so understand City Vision students, our values, and to learn what does it mean if you're having education centered around training those that are serving the poor and the addicted. So all that creates an environment that course design at City Vision is extremely difficult. Um, part of the reason for that is to date schools either achieve scale or they culturally contextualize for non-majority culture students. We're trying to do both in a Christian context. So most faculty come in and they can do one or the other. So you have faculty that come from a, a Christian justice you know, background and they understand how to culturally contextualize, um, but they don't have expertise in online education. So ultimately we need our course designers to do, um, you know, both of these things. We, we need them to help us to achieve scale by having high quality online courses and culturally um, contextualized. So what are the competencies for course designers? So this is somewhat an oversimplification. So, you know, one, you have to be able to do Christian integration. So, and that's our Jesus value. And can you design online courses integrating your discipline with a Christian worldview comparable to the top leaders in Christian higher education in your field? That's a high bar. And, and ultimately, that's what we're looking for people to, to be able to do. Cultural competency can design online courses that are very practical, effective, and culturally relevant to Christians serving the poor and the addicted. Um, online education competency, for many, this is the hardest, can design courses, programs, processes, and policies that reflect the best practices of online um, accredited online education. So that's like the online learning consortium is probably the best conference for, for that. And then discipline competency. So most of our faculty are coming in with this, this kind of an accreditation requirement. Um, and they demonstrate subject matter expertise and their discipline comparable to the top leaders in their field. Um, so part of it is understanding, you know, what is city visions value proposition? What makes us unique to students? Why do they choose us? And how does that drive our course design? So our number one value, you know, some people think they come here because that, that our students come here because they're cheap, but the reality is our number one value is we're providing extremely targeted practical education for Christians who are serving the poor, the addicted, and the underserved. Often this requires customized and non-standard courses. So um, we have an extreme focus on practical application and, and strong translation into cultural context. Um, the second reason why people come is the affordability and convenience. So, um, you know, that changes a lot of our design. We use third party material when possible. We use uh, what's called good enough design principles to focus on value. Um, some 
you know, schools will spend, you know, ten to fifty thousand dollars for each course um, to get, you know, perfect quality. Um, we're going to focus more on value because the, the students aren't going to pay want to pay for that perfect quality. Um, and then, you know, they come because of the, the Christian integration. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. And the other reason they come is we're focused on partnerships with Christian nonprofits. So 75% of our students. So, so we're designing not just for the student, but for the nonprofit context. Now, many of you have heard of the uh, Iron Triangle of Project Management. Um, and so basically the point of that is, you know, you have to think about how are you, how much are you going to optimize if you're designing a project, you can't have it done instantly, you know, really quickly and control cost and have great quality. So often you have to pick which of these is the most important and then which is the next most important, which are you willing to flex on? So traditional universities, um, the reality is that they're focused really strongly on quality. What they're saying is, um, we're gonna, um, you know, we don't really care about how much it costs. So that's why, you know, many Christian universities now cost, uh, over $50,000. Um, and whereas for us, you know, we're focused much more kind of in between these two. So cost is important, practical application. So there's something whenever you're designing things, it's called fixed cost design versus fixed quality design. Um, so a fixed cost design is, you know, what City Vision's doing right now. So our average tuition we get from students is about $5,500 per student after the, the discounts between that and, and 6,000. So we say, what's the best quality we can provide for that? Now, over time, we'll start to increase that somewhat. Um, whereas other universities say, you know, we're going to have X full-time faculty and, you know, if the cost has to be $50,000 a year, then, then that's, that's what it is. So, um, so we're, we're trying to design so that our cost is one third to one quarter of, uh, traditional, um, Christian schools. Now, another thing that makes us unique and, and so is we use something that's called adaptive design. Um, so we're much more focused on adaptive design, um, Part of the reason for that is cultural minorities and those with limited resources often face environments with more unknowns um, than majority culture students with a more homogenous culture. So adaptive designs needed. So just to put that in specific terms, uh, you know, often a Christian college, um, they might have 80% of their students that are white, uh, middle class or above, and um, they... Um, are 18 to 24. Um, that's very easy to design for, um, from, from my perspective. Um, our students are much more difficult to invite. They're, they're much less homogeneous. So, um, and then, uh, you know, what is the definition of quality? So I say, you know, traditional universities are focused on quality. Well, that's quality based on their context. So, um, the, the cultural contextualization for our students is a much larger part of the definition of quality um, for our students. Um, so, so that informs our, our design. So these are all the kind of underlining pr principles. Um, now one of the other things to understand. So in terms of, we talked about Christian integration and I'll talk a little more of what we mean by that, but strong integration is where, um, you know, th there's going to be extremely deep aspects of integration. So ministry courses, vocation courses, leadership courses, um, counseling courses where clear worldview boundaries need to be set. So family, sexual addiction, spirituality, addiction, residential recovery, dual diagnosis. Um, and then you have moderate integration. So this might be counseling skills, case management for management. It might be fundraising, you know, um, and then low to none, you know, accounting. Um, you know, one of the things Tim Keller says is what, what makes a good Christian airline pilot? He said, someone who can land the plane. Um, at the end of the day, you know, your accountant, you want them to be able to get your accounting done. You, you, you don't want them to, you know, be in doing fraud, but if you're training, being trained for accounting, you need to be able to do accounting, right? Um, you, and not that the worldview isn't important, but it's not, we're not going to spend half the course, you know, on that. Um, and then we have some courses that are just, they're, they're basically exam prep for addic addiction, um, counseling certification. So a lot of these courses, you know, will have, you know, low or, or, or no integration. Now, what do I mean by worldview? Um, 
so you can read books, some of these universe next door, hidden worldviews. Um, basically the worldview is the macro questions that are informing the overall design. So what's the base worldview? Um, so you have Christian worldview and most of our courses will relate to uh, the social science world. And often we're getting textbooks from a sec secular social science worldview. Now, technically what that's called is secular scientific naturalism. Um, so you ask a question of what's the fundamental problem? Um, Christians say it's sin, whereas the secular world says it's going to be some sort of social or psychological problem. So the social problem might be unequal p power. Um, the solution, you know, Christians would say salvation. And um, social sciences would say a social or counseling problem. So, you know, the social problem might be giving people access to power. Now, part of the understanding of this, so salvation, um, you know, not that we're all just going to say a sinner's prayer. Um, salvation may, you know, include turning to Jesus and also addressing these things. But, you know, it, it's kind of, you know, what's the summary? So who are we? Um, this is huge and informs a lot of these courses. So we're in God's image, but we have a fallen identity in Christ um, versus, you know, we're thinking animals or collection of atoms or our primary identity is our social or group identity. Um, where we come from, God versus academic cosmic chance, philosophy, spiritual, holistic, materialistic, and postmodern. What is truth? Uh, biblical plus general re revelation um, and versus entirely socially constructed, values Bible base, pretends um, falsely to be values free, and how should I live? The summary is love God, love others. And, you know, this is an example um, of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Once you get to the top, it's basically self-actualization. You know, Christians would have a different approach. It's not just individual pleasure maximizing or, you know, our whole philosophy should be uh, based around social activism. Um, so if you are in addiction counseling, I would encourage you to uh, look at some of the core lectures um, in our um, Introduction to Christian Addiction Counseling uh, course because that's going to go a little deeper in our approach. Um, but another kind of summary, if you look at addiction counseling, so to be accredited and get people licensed, we have to, to align with the addiction counseling standards. So you have all these different standards that we cover. Now we have to at least cover those in our courses and anything else that we cover, um, you know, compared to a secular school, it's going to be extra work for students. It's going to be, you know, extra cost for us to generate. Um, but our Christians do it because that's part of the value that we're providing. So what, what are these common, um, you know, related faith integration topics? And, and often these are how Christian worldview informs perspectives on human development and purpose. So some of those questions I asked before, um, nature versus nurture and personal responsibility, the importance and role of family, norms on human sexuality. It's worth stating that uh, City Vision, you know, follows a traditional view on marriage and that, you know, we have students who don't follow that, that, and, you know, but this is what we, we teach here, right? So, um, you know, how we approach medication assisted treatment, you know, this is a lot of Christian ministries are going to take a different approach than say a secular world, same thing, or, or secular worldview um, organization, same thing on, you know, being much more wary and thinking about what are the values impact of housing some, you know, philosophy of, of housing first or low barrier shelters ap approaches um, to, to those who are homeless and, and addicted. Um, objectivity centered approaches to counseling versus com compassion centered. And um, just recognizing that to meet certification and accreditation standards, some courses will have to focus primarily on meeting those standards, while other courses will have stronger faith integration. So I'm not going to go into this in all detail, but our intro course covers uh, counseling and Christianity, um, five views, and we recognize our students are going to work in different contexts. So you have biblical counseling to really a secular model over here, and then there's some in the middle. And you're going to have, uh, you know, a lot of our students are going to work in, in secular contexts, so we need to train them to understand what are the rules there. Then you have uh, students who are going to be counselors in Christian organizations, and then you're going to be, uh, you know, Christian and, you know, just in churches. And what we're trying to do is to expose our students across the board. 
recognizing that, you know, say if we do an addiction counseling certification course, that's just going to be in this framework. It's not covering, you know, Christian, Christian stuff. Um, but we might also have a biblical counseling course that is going to be focused much more here. And every course isn't going to cover everything here. Um, you know, similar types of approach to how we approach cross-cultural courses and design. Some courses are going to be written just in the majority culture. So most management courses, most counseling courses, we're not trying to change and adapt, you know, how would this work if, you know, you're, you're kind of in a black church context or a Latino church context. Then there's other, um, others that are going to be more blended culture. So a lot of addiction counseling specific courses, ministry courses, and then there's other courses that we've designed that are really targeting more non-majority culture. So leadership and under-resourced communities, cross-cultural management, Christian community development, urban youth ministry. Um, and we, we often need to, to consider, um, you know, where uh, the, the students are. Sorry, just filling in that thought. Um, you know, we have to consider that students are coming from different cultural contexts. So one of the the things we also use, this is similar to what we talked about with, with counseling, is there's six perspectives on Christianity, race, and justice that we talk about here. I mean, there's more than that, right? Um, but, you know, over here you have kind of nearly all white, white nearly all non-white, um, and you have white fundamentalist Christians, you have white evangelical Christians, and this is the number of students or, or percent of students, and these are the kind of the authors. Um, and you have, you know, what I'd call the reconcilers, um, you have working class people of color, and then you have what I'd call the talented tenth. So that's uh, upper middle class uh, people of color. And, you know, this is roughly the split. And how you approach racial racial discussions or justice issues, white evangelicals are used to the conversation that's happening among these authors. Whereas, you know, the upper middle class people of color are used to a conversation that's happening here. We get them all in the same course. So part of what we've done, and, and there's also kind of this, this secular, frame, part of what we've done is some of the course will be centered around this, this group. Often we'll pick a, a book that everyone reads that's in, in this framework. Um, but then we'll let other people pick their own, uh, you know, secondary book for some of those courses. Now, another way of framing this is to recognize where our students are coming from. So I mentioned 75% of our students come from, uh, you know, partner organizations. And I, I frame this, you know, what um, some people have called the social justice tradition or charity tradition. So we have 29% of our students that come from rescue missions, 28% uh, of our students that are part of what I'd call the Christian recovery movement. 18% are from holistic missions organizations, 18% from um, black church, 8% um, from Latinx church. Now, now these um, aren't necessarily working in those churches, but they attend those churches. Salvation Army, Teen Challenge, these are all going to have different approaches um, to cross-cultural issues. All these things need to be taken into account as you're, you're designing things, designing courses. So all that's to say is we have an incredibly diverse audience um, here at, at City Vision. So, you know, the idea of doing, you know, standardization um, versus customization, we have to do a lot more customization. But sometimes, um, you know, we're going to be asking the question, um, you know, is this course intended to follow generic uh, standardized model for a topic? Um, and uh, so if it's standardized, you know, th there's basically three categories of courses. It can be uh, highly standardized, like an accounting course. Um, or highly customized or kind of low customization. So, and there's a tension because um, we said we're trying to reduce cost and standardized courses reduces cost, but customized courses better fit our context. And often those are intention. So it depends on the topic. Um, recognizing that customizations are primary competitive advantage, costs are secondary competitive advantage. So some standardized courses, addiction counseling 101, addiction counseling certification, intro to business, English comp, all of these, we just use basic standard textbooks without much customization. Then we had highly customized course examples. Um, so leadership and diverse and under-resourced communities. So we highly customize that for faith integration and for non-majority culture contacts across race, class, and gender. Organizational behavior. Um, we uh, moderately customize that because we want it to be more practical. Normally, organizational be behavior is just an app 
academic theoretical course, we added the, the sub tagline developing he healthy organizations because we want it to be more practical. Um, vocation, calling and purpose of work. Um, that we made highly customized to be more practical, project-based and entrepreneurial to reflect our values. Introduction to nonprofit and ministry management, highly customized to fit ministry contexts and to serve as our orientation for students. So that's just some example. So as you're designing a course, part of the template and part of the process is we're going to help you sort through a lot of these questions of what type of course are you designing and um, how you design it is going to depend on that context. So hopefully this is helpful. You know, again, this is a really uh, dense lecture, so you may want to revisit again as you start to go into the course design. So thanks a lot.